I think one of my favorites is this discussion, uh, not just me, but like, for example, David Henson has been talking about giving uh, robotic systems and AGI based systems this sense of wanting to continue to live. I think that's a very exciting concept. And I have long argued for this idea called mortal computation, which is the idea that computers uh, ultimately should not want to die. Uh, we obviously win. So I like David's way of putting it, should want to continue living. And that serves as like a foundation for completely changing how we think about intelligence at large. Uh, and I think that's an exciting idea. I hear this across different speakers. Someone was talking about our systems should care and how do we quantify and try to emulate this concept of caring about things. I've been hearing ideas about creativity uh, and I like these concepts. And I think that's something that we haven't been focusing enough on in the area of machine intelligence. And I think it starts to open doors to uh, new and efficient and robust ways of building general intelligence systems. We used to be afraid of giving it a survival goal. So what changed? Uh, I don't think anything changed in terms of being fearful of that. Uh, the reason I think it's important that that concept has come up is because it, it sort of gets at the origins of life, right? Because even the most basic organisms want to avoid disintegration, right? They want to continue persisting. They want to gather resources to continue moving on. And so much complex intelligence builds on that fundamental building block. I also think that by thinking about the persistence idea, the drive to live, right? That means our computers don't want to be shut off. Um, what that gives us is a good shot at empathy and human value alignment, because right now we have these systems that just don't care about us. It sounds to me like the risks haven't changed, but we've come to a point when we've realized we're going to have to take some risks to get where we want to go. Does that sound right? Yes, but I also think it gets us to start thinking about how you would even begin training and teaching these machines. It's very different than the way I think machine learning today happens, where you are in direct control. We sort of have every control over every dimension of the behavior and computational processing of these systems, these deep learning models. Um, whereas now, this would mean we would have to coexist with these systems. You would almost have to start thinking about how would you teach a f another fellow human, right, to learn certain skills. Um, the way in which we interact with them is you're not going to have the control of their internals, but you do have control over how you coexist because they're going to be embedded in our society. And I think that's our chance to also coexist in a mutually beneficial way. And I think that opens up a completely new paradigm of thinking about how do we begin training these, you know, particular mortal computers, as I like to call them, uh, such that they can also align with us, right? That they also want to work with us to solve our problems and not, for example, because we will have to think about their rights. We will have to think about the ethics of sentient beings, things that need to, that feel pain, that feel fear, that feel hunger. And this is, would be the most complex type of system. But I also think that's the opportunity to say, well, we don't want to be enslaving these systems, right? A big phrase I've been hearing that I recently like and I think should be at the forefront if we pursue this direction is BGI or beneficial general intelligence. And I think the beneficial is both directions. We want the technology to benefit humanity as a species, but we also want ourselves or the species to benefit the species of mortal computers or these general intelligence systems that don't want to live, uh, don't want to die. Um, and I think that there's a kind of symbiosis that maybe perhaps will emerge as we start to think about how can we help each other to work to solve bigger and more complex problems. What are your thoughts on coexisting and the ethical pitfalls of giving them fears and desires and feelings? Oh, there's, it's rife with, it's all the exact, all the concerns are valid. I think that all the ethical considerations of giving sentience to a system, it's, this is essentially describing artificial sentience, um, are all at play. Well, I don't think I am the most qualified to speak broadly or what would be ideal for what would be would call robotic rights or uh, understanding what's the right way to coexist. I do think it's something we're going to need to come face. It doesn't mean 
blindly ignore that this, oh, we'll figure it out once we get there. I do think we need to start thinking about what would it look like to coexist. And uh, we could maybe even appeal in some sense to experiments that are done in human computer interaction. There's something called the Wizard of Oz study. And that study says, let me pretend I have the thing I want. So we could pretend that we have mortal computers or we have an intelligent feeling thinking robot um, and start thinking about designing experiments as to what would it look like with, uh, you know, maybe solving certain problems together with humans and robots, Wizard of Oz robots, and what are the right ways in which we interact with them. I think turning them off or having an override switch sounds great. It has a kind of sci-fi feel like, can I shut off Skynet? Um, I'm not sure that that would work as well because if these are truly intelligent systems as we want, they'll, they'll learn how to avoid that as well. So I think even a fail safe doesn't quite work. But if we want the complex behavior that we seek in these systems, I think there's no other way forward. It means that we're gonna have to look, take a hard look at ourselves as a, as a human species, our way that we socially interact with each other. There's a lot that should be changed in how we treat one another. Um, and this means we're gonna have to seriously think about how do we treat, I don't think you can think of these mortal computers, especially the most complex kinds, uh, as your slaves. I don't think that that's going to be a viable path. In fact, that's a recipe for disaster. I think the right ways to think of them as they are uh, a different kind of entity that can do things that perhaps we cannot do, um, and we can do things that they cannot do, and such that we cohabitate this world and make things better for one another, um, which also means treating one another with respect, for example, and dignity. You're going to have to come face to face with this, and it puts us the mirror back on ourselves too about how we treat one another. And I think it might require a serious reconsideration because if we really want general intelligence the way that we are projecting, and, if, and I think the only way forward is mortal computation or uh, living oriented AGI as you know for example David puts it um, that means we're gonna have to think about even how we talk and how we train and how we communicate with these entities it's not going to be like your traditional machine learning paradigm um, but I also think that's a wonderful opportunity right to build a better society because it's a hybrid society now it's a robot human society or a, let's say a mortal computer human society as opposed to just uh, thinking of them as purely as our tools for it to understand and empathize how we feel and know oh, to understand how to navigate a complex space you're going to need all those qualities that inherently make us mortal and make us complex organisms able to navigate an environment so i think this is an opportunity even though yes there's a lot of pitfalls there's nothing here that i can say we're guaranteed a positive outcome but we're also not guaranteed a negative outcome i think it's just an opportunity and i think it will be we will we should be developing in parallel not at I don't think we should develop mortal computers and blindly go into it saying, oh, we'll figure out how to deal with the problems that arise. We should be developing an ethical framework. What does it look like to give rights to a mortal computer? And like I was appealing to Wizard of Oz studies earlier, this could give us a chance to simulate what happens if we do reach that point and think about what ethicists and philosophers of mind and philosophers of ethics uh, would say about what would be the right way to build policies to allow us to coexist together and what's the right way to socially interact with a non-human system that's very intelligent.